Uh, so, welcome to the second recital of the semester. My good friend, Buddy Muhammad, is here. Give him a round of applause, everybody. And you're about to hear some cool stuff. I had actually forgotten all the stuff he's done, including um, he ran for Dallas County Commissioner on the Green Party ticket back in 2002. He has shared his talents as a bassist with many great musicians, Cedar Walton, Billy Preston, David Fathead Newman, Phyllis Hyman, Charles Tolliver, John Hicks, Duke Ellington, uh, Kid Jordan, Kenny Wheeler, Alex Koch, Selton Stone, Celt Celtic Stone, Celtic Stone, Celtic Stone is a basketball team. like I was saying, yes. <laughs> Uh, Michael Bogle. The Celtic Stone. He plays in my band. Yes, Michael Bogle. And we just released an album a couple years ago called Let There Be Light. You can find it on uh, YouTube. And um, Buddy is in there. And they're actually playing it on KNTU right now, Some, So, oh, awesome. yeah. So uh, that's going on. But anyway, uh, Buddy is into many different uh, Ethnic types of music, I guess it's fair to say. World music is kind of what we World call music, it. World yeah. Jazz. World jazz. So without further ado, uh, give it up for Buddy Muhammad, everybody. Thanks, Mike. Yeah, I think y'all can hear me, huh? Can you hear me way back up there? Do you want to hear me way back up there? Okay, yeah, I'm Buddy Muhammad. My, my folks were immigrants from Lebanon in Syria. I was born in East Chicago, Indiana in an immigrant town among immigrant steel workers. So I grew up with the blues and with um, Arab music and with lots of uh, uh, music from all over the world. And uh, I studied classical music and jazz. When I started playing, they didn't have jazz education. They had music education and they had jazz clubs that we snuck into to uh, figure out what's going on. So world music to me, you know, like the blues is one of the original world musics, but it's, it's the combining of cultures. So I, you have a list here. I'm gonna try to stick with it just because it's, it's right there and uh, makes things easier. But I might move around. This first tune is an original. Um, this is in 15-8, and a lot of the stuff I do is odd meter. So this one is 15-8. Uh, I'm gonna play with my looper here and it's very dangerous because we're live and I'm going to lay down the whole structure of this tune and then I'm going to go back and play the melody and jam and see if I can keep the eighth note somewhat constant so it's not a big difference between the beginning and the end. Hey, by the way, buddy, yes, sir. One other thing. Buddy is an alumni from this school from when they very first opened. Absolutely. I was here the first year, 1977. It was so different in so many ways. I uh, could tell you, but I might get uh, Dr. Bogle in trouble. So, <laughs> yeah, well, but speak to me privately, I'll let you know. <laughs> this is Rainmaker in uh, 15. Is that one of my cables that's doing that, Steve? I hear Let's see if I get out of the way. Okay, I think we're good. Let's see if I can get through this whole structure of the rhythm track. And that's what I'm gonna do mostly today is I got a couple loaded, but I'm gonna play the rhythm part and then I'm gonna go back and play the melody. This is on my uh, first album called American Bedouin, uh, Rainmaker. Thank you. 
Next on our list, uh, this is a song that a band I was in many, many years ago with my brother called Belody Ensemble. We transcribed this song from an evil Papazov recording. We had the cassette tape. Um, evil Papazov is a Bulgarian clarinet player, probably the greatest clarinet player you've never heard. This guy is amazing, and his band is amazing. Look, I-V-O, evil Papa's off, just like it sounds. Ha <laughs> um, ha. Yeah, so we never knew the name of this. We always called it Bulgarian blues. This is in nine eight, and it's a it's a, a, a Bulgarian from Evil Papa's off's wedding band. So this is wedding music in Bulgaria. <laughs>
Y'all making me nervous. I don't know what I'm sweating for. I got the gig. Man, you know, there's a little, are all y'all music men, everybody's musicians here? Yeah. Yeah. Man, here's a secret that most music, many, I shouldn't say most, many, don't want to tell you. Almost every musician I know from the greatest to the not so great gets nervous before a gig. In some form or another, we have this nervous thing and um, we deal, deal with it in different ways. I deal with it by leaving, I'm sorry. <laughs> Security! So, best way to deal with it is to be prepared. And um, no matter how much I practice, I never feel like I've practiced enough. And uh, probably because there is no such thing. So, that's, I, and especially when it's musicians, I know you guys are like super critical and you're probably all like way better than me. Uh, okay, next on our thing. Um, this is a song, excuse, Excuse a little um, uh, a detour, a little callback. Where's my friend from earlier? Um, the, them bones. I'm using a, a finely, finely a mastered 1970s technology. Speaking of which, this is a song that uh, um, Carlos Santana wrote, and it's called Europa. Let's see if I can get through part of this, huh?
so much. Um, this is a song I wrote many years ago. It's featured on a Cafe Noir album. Cafe Noir was a, a, a pretty fairly prominent gypsy jazz band that I was part of. And uh, this is on the first Cafe Noir album. Uh, let me check. If I can get through it again. I didn't, I didn't rush horribly bad on that last one, but I, and that's like I said, the danger of uh, danger of live looping in front of musicians, especially. Um, yeah. So this is uh, another nine. This is a nine-four. This is based on a traditional Greek dance called zebekiko. I call it uh, slow zebekiko because it's based on zebekiko and it's slow. See how brilliant that is. So this is slow as a Beckico if I can get through the entire structure.
Just because you guys are music majors, I'm just going to show you. It's really simple. You count to A and then you add a B. So it's three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So you see, it's not that difficult. <laughs> You just got to remember that ninth beat. It's not that difficult to be as good as you? Uh, no, it's actually, it's not. It, many, many years. I'm old, you see. And I'm, I plan on, forgive me, I have been twice vaccinated, Joe, so I am, I am doubly uh, safe in this sphere. Keep your distance. Um, but I plan on living another 64 years so I can finally begin to get as good as I'd like. It was, a, it was a quote by uh, Pablo Casals. Anybody know who that is besides Dr. Bogle? Pablo Casals, anyone? Was like a great cello player, one of the greatest maestros. And someone uh, caught him practicing. He was like 85, 86. And he said, Mr. Ca you know, maestro, you're the greatest musician living. Why are you still practicing at 85? And he said, because I'm beginning to see some progress. <laughs> Oh, this is a good one. Again, um, world music is just combining different musics. And um, when I was studying music, when I came here, there, like I said, there really was no such thing as jazz education or jazz theory. There was music theory and music education. And, and then they called it comprehensive musicianship. Does that still exist, Dr. Vogel? That's not a thing anymore? So and they used to say, we're going to teach you um, Bach, Bird, and the Beatles. And everything was relevant. And you all know who Bird is? Thank you. And Bach, and everybody knows who the Beatles are. That was the band that Paul McCartney used to be in before Wings. Huh. So um, yeah, so I draw from everything. And like I said, I studied classical music, and, uh, um, and I still play some. And this is. Uh, a thing from uh, a, a Spanish opera by a French composer. In uh, Texas, we say Henry Bizet. In France, they say Henri Bizet. So this is from Carmen. If I can get through this, let me try. <laughs> Thank you. 
thank you. That was from Bizet's opera, Carmen. Like I say, it's a Spanish opera by a French guy. I don't know how we do that one, but he did it. Um, and it's actually a, a, a wonderful piece of music. I'm gonna try something different here. Um, this is a, a, a piece, my own little arrangement. Again, world music, I combine everything. It's just music, but um, they love labels. And uh, um, I hate the word jazz because Kenny G. It's a joke, Kenny G is great. You're supposed to laugh at Kenny G. Gosh, um, I hate jazz because uh, Frank Sinatra. No, he's great. Uh, Sands, what's with, with uh, Count Basie? So this is uh, a song by a, a fellow from Fort Worth that changed um, jazz, was extremely influential, and um, was not much appreciated in Fort Worth. Um, he was very, very, very innovative and ahead of his time. His name is Ornette Coleman. And if y'all don't know Ornette Coleman, a uh, local boy, well, local, Fort Worth, and uh, um, actually uh, one of the great maestros of the 20th century, please check out his record called The Shape of Jazz to Come. It, it's uh, uh, very influential and uh, uh, seminal for all American music musicians. So this is one. Um, called Lonely Woman, my own little arrangement of it.
for you. Ornick Coleman. Look him up. Oh, looks like we have time for one more, maybe? A couple more, what do you say? Dr. Bogle. Okay, I'm gonna do this one then. This is a, um, I don't know, I might use that, I might not. This song I wrote uh, not about around, I don't know, 98 or so when I moved back to Oak Cliff after my second marriage. Um, before my fourth, fifth, seventh, and twelfth. <laughs> um, and uh, I would just, I was happy to be back to Oak Cliff. I had been living in, in Louisville, you know, with, with a beautiful woman that um, I felt hopelessly and madly out of love with. And uh, so I was just happy to be back out of the, you know, the, the, the farmers in the countryville of Louisville and back in the hood, what my hood and, and uh, my folks from Lebanon and the cedar tree figures prominently in Lebanon and it also figures prominently in Oak Cliff and looky here, figures prominently at Cedar Valley. So this is a song where I combine the two things. I did, haven't done a blues, and I almost always do a blues. And if anybody here does not know a 12-bar blues, please see me, because I'm either going to your butt, beat your butt, or I'm going to teach you 12-bar blues. Dr. Bogle, every American musician must know the 12-bar blues. So this is based on the blues, but it's got some of my Lebanese stuff mixed in it, and it's called Blue Cedars. Thank you so much, Dr. Bogle. Thank you, Cedar Valley. And all you guys are really uh, fortunate to be here, and, and they're fortunate to have you, and I'm fortunate to be here. And it's called Blue Cedars. much. My name is Buddy Muhammad. It's spelled M-O-H-M-E-D. Look me up on YouTube. That'll help a bunch. American Bedouin I also go by. Yes. Absolutely. So um, when I was young, I'm I'm 64, and in the 60s, when I was a young boy, hippydom was very uh, prevalent, and every household had some kind of a box guitar laying around, and that's how I started was um, uh, just picking up the box guitar. I remember the first thing I did was... Uh, and then the second thing I did was... Uh, I, 
had a brother that was a drummer, he's 10 years older than I, and so the, he had a drum set. Once he got a drum set, then I started beating on the drums. And that was kind of it until I, uh, I had a, a, a pretty vagabond youth, very um, aspiring to working class, uh, actually near homeless at times. And uh, um, when I got to finally Sunset High School in Oak Cliff, in uh, 10th grade, that was the 11th school I had been to. And um, I uh, got in, a, um, actually the story is this. Sorry, Dr. Bogue, I've got to spill the beans. Sitting out in the back of the school, skipping class, smoking weed. And the kids around us said, watch it, there's a teacher coming, it's a teacher coming. And we look up and it's the band director and a couple of the kids I knew from the neighborhood. And the band director walks right up to me and we're putting it on, what the heck's going on? And he says, I understand you play guitar. And I said, yeah. And he grabs me by the collar like this. He says, come with me, you're in, the, you're in the stage band, they call it. Come with me, you're in the stage band now. And he had put together this jazz band, stage band, dance band. And it was pretty good except no one knew how to improvise. And the guys in the neighborhood knew that I could do this. And they said, oh man, buddy can solo over anything. So I got in the, in the jazz band and I kind of knew I had taught myself how to look at chords and kind of figure them out, but I didn't know how to read music. So I decided I was gonna learn how to read music and I got an orchestra at sunset. And um, that was halfway through 10th grade and uh, bass violin was E A D G, and I was like, I know those strings, so I took up bass violin. And by the time I graduated, I was playing the Capuzzi Bass Concerto and auditioned for Fort Worth Symphony and found a teacher. And I was, I spent you know many many hours with a school bass and a funky bow in my mom's garage apartment, you know doing things I probably shouldn't have done, but practicing my tail off on the base. Um, and that just led me to uh, first Mountain View and then Cedar Valley and then I went on the road and got a gig for a minute and then uh, UTA and, uh, um, and then I went on the road again and I went to uh, um, North Texas, my last foray at school, 92 I think it was, right, Dr. Bogle, that's where I met Dr. Bogle and, uh, and I did the, the lab band thing there and I was so close to graduating and then I got a gig with uh, um, Billy Preston, if any of you are old enough to know who that was, one of the great American musicians, Billy Preston. If you asked one of the Beatles who was the fifth Beatle, it was Billy Preston. He recorded with them, he's on their videos. And so I dropped out of college again and went on the road. So. And yeah, and how do I get, and this is, this is a guitar, I went to, uh, one point I worked for a Quebec company called uh, um, Cirque du Soleil, and I kind of fell in, in love with the French Canadian things and I discovered these guitars. This is a brand called Godin and uh, they're made in Quebec. And uh, this is an A6, it's actually a stereo, I'm not using a stereo, but uh, you can take a, a, a line from the humbucker and it's got a piezo, and you can take a line from there if you want. But this is just um, going straight, you know, using them both. And this is just a simple, which number is this? Uh, five, RC5, they call it a loop station. It's got drums and it's got stuff on there. I hate the way the drums sound. I grew up with drummers and I'm very close to a lot of drummers so I cannot stand that stuff. Um, so I just use it as a simple loop. Does, does that answer the question? Yes. Yes. Any other questions? How can light be both a particle and a wave at the same time? <laughs> All right, let's give it up for a Thanks guys, thanks Mike. Thank you, Steve, wherever you are. And the crew, thank you, crew.